Hello Piloteers, this is Aaron here from Honda Pilot Overland. Today I'd like to give you a walkthrough of my rooftop setup. So I want to start off with the roof basket first. Uh, this is a Smitty Built Defender one-piece roof basket. I was able to find it on Craigslist and actually got the lights and the wiring uh, all together for only $300. I was really, really, really lucky. Uh, this particular basket is uh, 48 inches by 48, 48 inches, and it fits on the pilot, in my opinion, really well. Uh, it's been a good, good basket. Um, again, I uh, found it on Craigslist, so it's not like I searched for the best one on the market. Um, and I really like the way it's kind of slim, not too bulky, especially with the uh, weatherproof boxes that I chose. They're just the, let's see what they are, Plano all-weather tactical rooftop boxes. They've been pretty pretty water resistant. Um, when I strap them down, I do put a strap over the uh, the front and the back to kind of squeeze down this, this lip right here uh, to just keep it extra tight for when you're driving in the rain. Uh, it helps to just kind of close that gap and keep everything inside dry. Um, I've had these on the top of my car a lot and uh, I'd say they're holding up to UV and the sunlight pretty well. Uh, so I got a high lift jack here on the side and you might be thinking, well, why do you have a high lift jack on a car with no jack points? Well, uh, I use it for one as a hand winch. It's a really strong hand winch. Uh, you use that with chain. Uh, you can kind of Google how to use a high lift jack as a, as a hand winch. Um, but I've also used it to jack up trailers, to uh, lift up uh, trees that get pinched on um, on your chainsaw. Uh, there's really a million different uses for it. You can even rotate this top piece up and use the foot and that top piece as a clamp to kind of squeeze on things. So I've actually been, I've actually gotten a good bit of use out of it and I've, I've really found it worthwhile. Uh, it came with the roof rack as well. Um, so who knows, I probably wouldn't have bought it if it didn't come with it, but I have found a lot of use for it so far. The uh, LED pod lights here are ProComp Explorer lights. They, uh, they're pretty bright. Um, again, if it didn't come with the roof rack, I don't know that I would have immediately been searching out uh, more light. Um, generally speaking, I'm pretty pleased with the uh, LED high beams that I have. Uh, they light up the road pretty darn well. Um, I'm actually looking at some point to convert the front pod lights into a light bar. Um, I do think that that would give me better light coverage. Uh, these tend to kind of twist and point up and down and I just think that the bar would be easier to adjust it once and kind of leave it. Um, they have not worn super well. You know, the paint's chipping off a little bit. There's probably, uh, for lack of uh, cleaning, uh, there's bug crud and all kinds of stuff on the front. They're kind of yellowing. Uh, but I do find them useful uh, from time to time. I actually find the rear ones, which I've wired separately, to be more useful than the front ones. We actually do some boating. In the past, I've done duck hunting. And whenever you're trying to back a boat down at night or uh, back your trailer down at night, it really does help to be able to shine some light backwards. Or if you're just backing a trailer up anywhere, uh, it helps to have more light. Or if you're off-road and you're navigating backwards, again, it just helps to have more light. So we've I've actually found the rear rear ones more useful than the front ones. Um, that being said, I have also upgraded my rear backup lights uh, on the Pilot itself to LEDs as well, and they are significantly brighter. That was a really good mod. If you don't have the top lights, highly recommend just looking up uh, some LED lights for the, the rear view lights. All right, while we're back here talking about lights, we may as well talk about how I've run the wire, the power from the uh, roof basket down into the Pilot. So I basically have a wire here that comes down from the basket. It's just uh, zip tied to the, uh, the roof rail. Um, and then I've just wrapped it in, um, in electrical tape. And I've run it just kind of down this channel here and into the spot where the headlights wiring goes into the car. Uh, from there, uh, you can get it into the car and um, you basically kind of get it up underneath this plastic molding. The hardest part is right in here, uh, but if you kind of are diligent with it, you can get it to tuck under there pretty nicely. 
And then from there, it's kind of more like running normal uh, speaker wire and stuff. You just go under the, the outside trim molding. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I did some research. I was able to find two switches and I was able to cut holes into the existing uh, plastic switch plate here and uh, make what I think is a pretty pretty swell setup here. Um, the bottom's the rear and the top's the front. So I've been pretty happy with that as well. On the side here, we have an eight and a half, uh, eight and a half by nine foot Tent Pro Ink awning. I don't think Tent Pro Ink makes awnings anymore. It was just kind of a cheap one I found on Amazon. Uh, I, before I had uh, like a six and a half by eight foot uh, Smitty built uh, awning, I didn't like the coverage. I've got a family of five. I like to have a table underneath of it. And if it was raining or something, the six and a half footer just would have been kind of lacking. Um, I really like the size of this one. Uh, I would recommend it to others. Uh, this build of this particular one is pretty lightweight. Um, I don't think it, I mean, it was pretty easy to install. Uh, we've been happy with that. Um, and we're probably going to end up using it on our camping trip this weekend. So we're pretty excited about that too. Ugh. And then up on top here, we got all the goodies. So we have uh, four just kind of generic uh, off-road traction pads. Um, you know, they're not the greatest. The teeth wear out pretty quick, uh, but they have gotten us out of quite a few pinches. Um, and I do think they're worth having on top. Uh, one time my dad was pulling us out with his uh, big F-250 and his F-250 almost got stuck while he was pulling us out. And I was kind of thinking to myself, man, what kind of recovery gear could I pick up that could maybe help, you know, an F-250 or something bigger get out? And uh, the beauty of the traction pads is that the car's power still is, you know, part of what's helping it get out. So... I did pick up some of those and I probably should have picked them up sooner. I think that the hand winch and those are, that's where you start with the recovery gear, in my opinion, um, and some good chain rope, and then also just analyzing your, your recovery points. All right. So, uh, and then up in the boxes, what do we have? So again, I have a family of five. So I have in this first box, five chairs, camp chairs. Um, in the past, we've actually carried them with us with a folding table, uh, which also just kind of goes nicely on top of these boxes. Uh, we used to carry it like everywhere we went. And you'd be surprised as a family of five, how often you get into, you know, you go to a party or you go to somewhere where there's a gathering and it just is nice to have your own seats. So we have uh, three, you know, kid size folding chairs and then uh, two adult, you know, super ultralight compact camping chairs. Eventually, as the kids get a little older and they can set up one of these ultralight camping chairs, we'll convert to having five of those. It'll actually free up a little bit of space in here. Um, it's a tight fit, as you can see. It actually fits perfectly. Couldn't really hold anything more. Um, but we really enjoy having those seats with us. All right. And so in the middle box, which uh, hopefully I don't have to use as often, I've got a bunch of tools uh, that I've found useful uh, from time to time. Let's see if I can get this with my right hand. And uh, I'll kind of run through some of those tools with you. Uh, it's kind of a lot to carry. Um, you know, I, I don't know how much this box weighs, but it probably weighs 50 pounds with all these tools. But again, I, I've... Uh, it's nice when someone's broken down on the side of the road, if you have time, you can kind of pull over and see if you can help them. And if you have tools, you can help a lot of people. All right, so I got my uh, electric uh, impact gun here, 24 volt uh, uh, cobalt impact gun. This thing's been beast. Uh, it completely changed how I do my car repairs and stuff. I used to have, you know, the air gun and uh, not that air guns aren't good, but not having to whip out the, uh, the hose and the pump is really awesome. Um, I carry a smaller impact gun with me. Um, good for getting, you know, smaller bolts and stuff. Got a sawzall with me. You'd be surprised how often that comes in handy. 
Uh, and when you're camping and stuff, you can use it to cut through trees and different stuff like that. A uh, little mini sledge. Um, for the pilot, we'll get into this on another video. I'm going to do a uh, kind of, I don't know how many miles I've had my lift, but I'm going to do a review of my lift and, you know, my thoughts on it. Uh, but you can kind of get a little bit of an idea of it by this tool because I use this tool and this pair of vice grips to, to remove axles when they uh, die. And, you know, I've had a bit of a history with the axles dying. Um, in hindsight, I would still do it over again myself. But part of the reason is because I'm able to fix the axles, uh, you know, relatively easy. So, uh, but I do carry uh, some tools for helping get that axle out in case I, I needed to. I don't carry any spare axles at this point in time. Thankfully, I've uh, only had one that just stopped working entirely and it was at home. Also, it gave us lots of warning before it broke. I should have had it replaced sooner. Lots of wrenches. Um, can be useful to have split ring pliers, lots of sockets. Um, I have another toolbox that I uh, put underneath the passenger side seat here. And uh, it's kind of my, it started out as like a cheap Walmart kit, but now it's my, my little homebrew miscellaneous tool kit. Uh, yeah, it's got like a little piece of pipe in there all kinds of extensions that I've kind of slotted into different places. And then here we have a bunch of miscellaneous stuff that normally wouldn't be in the tool kit, but it uh, gets me out of a lot of pickles. Um, so yeah, so that's about everything we have on the rooftop. Um, you know, if we, we live in the Southeast, so a lot of our trips, you know, are more on-road than off-road. We don't have lots of, you know, we don't have miles and miles of off-road trails to drive on. Um, if I did have, you know, more distance to drive, I would consider putting maybe some solar up there um, and some different things. But for right now, uh, that loadout really suits us well. And uh, we're able to, it, you know, helps us on our adventures. So again, I, th I think what I'm gonna do next is, uh, at some point I'm gonna do a update on our lift. Um, we've gone over over uh, 70,000 miles at least with our lift. Um, we uh, actually broke uh, 255,555 just yesterday, which was kind of a cool number to see on the odometer. Um, but anyways, uh, you know, in the comments, if you guys have any specific interest, uh, feel free to, you know, message me. Um, and in the future, as I'm doing repairs and stuff, I'm gonna try to do a better job recording it. A lot of times I get into repair mode and I really don't, you know, whip out the camera and stuff. I just want to get it fixed. Um, if you guys work on cars, you kind of know how it is. You don't know if you're going to actually succeed with the repair and you kind of are eager to just get into it. Uh, but in the future, I think I'm going to start, for, especially for some of the common repairs, I'm going to start uh, recording them to help you guys out. Uh, if you guys have any specific ones, um, you know, even lift stuff, uh, airbags, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, maybe even just removing some of the stuff and kind of doing a, a walkthrough. Uh, you know, even if I don't have to do it, maybe recording it could help you guys. But, um, yep, I'll uh, see you later. We'll probably get some footage on our camping trip. It's just a car camping trip with a trailer. Uh, but it is going to be a little bit chilly, so uh, wish us luck. And we're going to have five kids with us, uh, under four under five. So it's going to be fun. <laughs> See you guys.